a week before, two weeks before I left. I see. Just two weeks, exactly two weeks before. Oh, that's great. All right, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to begin our next talk, which is, you can see this title, Cynic, a missing role in an agile team. And of course, our president here is Deepak Cohen, uh, who is an associate manager in quality engineering, as is stated on the slide. So, uh, with no further ado. Uh, All right, uh, am I audible at the back? Yes. Okay. So, uh, my name is Deepak. Uh, I'm an. Uh, QE basically and I started in 2007 this was the year when uh, the global economic recession also started incidentally and the and the selenium and the web driver projects also merged which would then go on to become the de facto uh, web testing standard so I did five years in PTC, which is uh, parametric technology. And before coming to Boston, I was not aware that PTC is headquartered 19 miles from here. And after that, I did six years in Red Hat. And I've been doing the same thing for last 11 years, like uh, accepting user stories, writing automated test cases, and finding bugs. So you'll say it is a monotonous, uh, monotonous job, right? But if you have an eye for it, uh, it throws a bit of nuances and challenges every day. All right, uh, anyone in this room uh, whose uh, responsibility is the software quality? All right, so there are a couple of people who fell in this trap. <laughs> so this was already discussed in one of the earlier uh, sessions that quality is everyone's responsibility. And the agile recipe, so the, my talk is, is an agile recipe, so it is only fair that I give you the disclaimer that the most important ingredient of any agile recipe is the, is the people which practice that success recipe, right? So you cannot copy a successful agile recipe and paste it on a different team and expect similar results. So it can either do really well, better than the other team, or fail really bad. All right, so let's start with the heartbreaking story. So has anyone seen this progress bar on a web page? Mm -hmm. GitLab has it. Okay, so it was back uh, four years ago. I was working on a user story, and uh, it was a ticket management tool, single page web app, a ticket management tool, which had, uh, let's say, hundreds of fields. And out of those hundreds of fields, two were the fields which used to be polled regularly because we had to show users the correct data a very uh, updated data so what we used to what we used to do till that time was we used to discreetly update those two fields by polling uh, in making two network calls in the back end without telling the user so in that sprint uh, there came a enhancement request that you need to give users a visual clue that you are fetching the fresh data for those two particular fields so my developer friend uh, used this JavaScript library. I really liked it because it it was on GitLab. It was on my favorite e-commerce site. So I thought it was cool. So as a QE, I tested on different browsers because JavaScript. And then I did regression tests as well. And one Friday morning, Eastern time, and Unfortunately, the Friday evening India time, we released it. And uh, I had this habit like teenagers when they put their uh, cute selfies on Facebook or Instagram, they refresh the feed to see how many likes. So after every release, I had this uh, habit of you know monitoring emails, IRC, as well as the Bugzilla feed to see whether there is some backlash or not. Till 30 minutes, there was nothing. And after 30 minutes, there was a huge outrage. These are not the actual clippings. I just made them. <laughs> so uh, there was a huge outrage. So everyone said that this is a usability disaster. 
this is uh, not this change this particular lo loader is distracting us from working and if we don't work on cases red hat loses business so we quickly reverted the change and to uh, bring back the saneness in the system and then we had a retro right like every team we had a retro and out of the retro everyone said that this happens we could not we could not uh, gauge the user behavior right we thought it was a good way of implementing this change but we could not so we actually uh, brushed it under the carpet but then i did a retro with myself so i'll explain in another slide that the retro which you do with your inner self is the best retro ever so this was the struggle so this is the user support engineers in our case and this is the qe and this is the developer if you look at these three categories of people which two are more likely to go for a drink together or maybe share a laugh or go on a team outing like qa and developer right because they have that team bond proximity and because of that proximity which is a psychological thing right you cannot change it because of that proximity what qe does normally in agile teams is they test the change they don't test why we why did the why did the developer implement that code change right so very existential question but qe's mostly fail to do that and more so in today's time when we don't have traditional qe's right every qe is also a developer of some different kind so they are, they are writing code day in and day out right so once you see a piece of code on your developer friend's machine your mind becomes biased so now you have three ways of breaking that code which you have already seen but it's not a black box to you now so there are there were hundred other ways of breaking that code which you will miss now then we thought about why don't why don't we do one thing why don't we bring fresher perspective into the qe thing so same work stream we bought another qe right but without making any capacity changes so there was user story 1 there was user story 2 and there was first qe and primary qe and secondary qe so primary qe will work on user story 1 for 50% of his time and on user story 2 for 50% of his time and the same thing secondary qe will do so because no two people think alike uh, i haven't made it up it is neuroscience our mind is uh, connected like our fingerprints it's different so different people perceive things differently so if you look at crowdsourcing testing platforms which have you know boomed up recently they exploit this thing so they ta they'll take a website and throw it to 500 testers all over the globe so we we thought that this will at least make some uh, improvement in our process it did but there was still a gap because to work in this system both the qes needed to attend all uh, scrum ceremonies like uh, daily stand up planning retro everything and the the proximity challenge which the primary qe earlier had the same thing happened with the secondary qe as well right then we came up with a new thing called cynic the cynic is someone uh, who is not part of this work stream a completely different person of maybe a different project or someone else on the bay right so what does cynic do so how do you f the first thing is how do you find a cynic so these are the qualities of a cynic cynic should not belong to your work stream or project which means that he is shielded from the project related discussions right the cynic should be naturally a vocal and assertive person so we don't need to make any uh, any effort on finding these people in red hat right <laughs> <laughs> and the third and most important thing he should be willing to help 
again in red hat you will find because people contribute to different projects so you will you will find cynics and then if you don't find then you have to incentivize right now what does a cynic do cynic gives a very fresh and mostly end user perspective to your work because he's not he's not seen the code right he's not uh, been part of planning or grooming or scrum so he is looking at your changes as a user and cynic is your accountability and if we go back to this line what we have to do is we have to nudge this person from here to slightly here right and cynic does that he nudges the primary secondary qe towards the building the right product side now the takeaway is from this talk so uh, if you look at what happened with uh, after that incident that uh, usability incident first we tried to introduce a secondary tester right then we identified the gaps then we tried to implement a cynic so we were constantly improving finding gaps and improving the system which is the essence of an agile team and then uh, again with the thing which i said earlier best retrospectives are the ones which you do with your inner self right because the actual retrospectives uh, retrospectives are very formal the third thing which you can do is you can sign up a cynic you can find a person in your bay who is not part of your project and ask him if, if he can give 30 minutes per week to you and see if it works for you as i said this is a recipe it can work for you can work better for you than it worked for us because uh, in our team we have this uh, we have a ui work stream a mid tier work stream a services work stream so the qe working in uh, ui work stream automatically become natural cynic of because they are the consumers of the service layer right they become natural cynic of the Uh, uh service layer work stream so what you can do is you can find a cynic a very assertive and vocal person and try to sign him sign him up for your project and some physical takeaways so if you look at this tiffin carrying jute bag i have bought this three of them from the mountains of kashmir in the north of india so i actually want the feedback for this so what for that i am incentivizing that's a nice bag so are you paying off the cynic sorry uh, are you taking the process by buying the cynic's affections maybe but right now i i just want feedback for this talk so whoever uh, uses this hashtag you can take the photo as well so whoever uses the, his, this tag uh, hashtag in next 30 minutes and provides a tweet as a feedback and because i have bought them with my hard earned money so i'll choose the best three tweets and i'll give away these bags hmm. All right. Uh, any questions? Uh, hi. A uh, great talk. I really enjoyed the uh, the cynic uh, as part of the team and like that aspect to it. But uh, I noticed that there was a bit of a similarity between the secondary QA. and the cynic cuz you're already pulling in an engineer from no uh, some other there is no similarity team. between uh, cynic and secondary qa secondary qa is part of your work stream so he has to attend your uh, scrum ceremonies uh, but doesn't the cynic also have to no oh so for cynic you have to the only interface between your project and cynic is the primary qa 
so just like code review you get you write code you get your code reviewed from your uh, buddy developer right so let's say all the stuff which was developed came on the uh, queue environment now i have to test it what if before testing i demo it to a cynic to get a fresher perspective 30 minutes for per sprint it's not much to ask for uh, so my secondary question uh, so if a QA chooses a single cynic and like frequently demos with them uh, after some point they're going to become uh, buddies and so they're going to have to find a new cynic and so, uh, so maybe maybe Red Hat won't have this problem but uh, <laughs> at smaller companies they might have trouble finding uh, enough cynics to see uh, if primary QA and cynic become buddies that's okay that that, that won't make any difference right okay. because it does not put any bias in cynics mind towards the work which developers are doing right if they're buddies I think there's going to be a little bit of a but he's a bias. QA right Q, the job of QA was initially to start with to break the code right but then we went into simply rubber stamping the code. Oh. So, so we need okay. a, see yeah. if you if you go to gym right uh, the the most impo uh, common example of accountability partner is the weight loss thing right. You start with weight loss. You make a new new year resolution. You start with weight loss, and uh, over a period of time, let's say by third January, you stop going to gym right. <laughs> But if there are two people who, who are each other's accountability partners, then there are chances that this weight, weight loss resolution will go till March or maybe mid of April. Thank you. Any other questions? Feedback? Me? You need a professional setting? Yeah. I'm for hire. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. All right. Time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Don't forget about the bags. I don't want to take them back because I have done shopping from Boston. <laughs> Well, as everybody probably remembers, we're going to the event job for the afternoon, the, the closing afternoon aspect. So yeah. that'll be a three. Okay.